guy who's coaching the Duke Blue Devils. Tim Comer flips it up in the air, and there's a lot of blue and gold in this building today because both these teams primarily wear blue and gold. Forest coming up this Saturday to resume ACC play. Well, first, this is the first competition for Pittsburgh in 10 days, so... Bound for Hamilton. Yeah, Pittsburgh only shooting about 27% from three, but don't tell that to Justin Champagne, who's two for two in the opening minute. Looks as though he got up a lot of reps from beyond the arc and they started off with a great start and then a big steal early. Champagne, not sure if he was thinking slim. has done a great job on the offensive glass. They haven't been able to get the second chance points, but continue to attack inside another offensive rebound. And this time the putback, an opportunity for the hand one. Terrell Brown, who picked up the foul the last trip, nice drive down the alley, banks it home. Put so much pressure on their guards on every possession to be able to make a shot from distance. Here's Malik Johnson, who we discussed in the open, making his 111th consecutive start today for Canisius. Try on the trip. The dunk comes up hard, but the fourth attempt, and that three is good from the wing. Amon Haree with another bucket. Coach Haree also... USA Basketball Royalty, so we talked with Coach Witherspoon about him recruiting from USA Basketball previously. That's a heck of a block by Terrell Brown denying the Griffin transition shot. And there's Blue Warner for the Panthers. Ryan Murphy knocks down his first shot of the day. Timing from the Canadian Junior. Shot clock winding down. Murphy forced to fire. Murphy at the end of the shot clock. Presence of mind to look at the other end and know there's only two seconds remaining. And when you shoot as well as Murphy does, sometimes... I don't think that's sustainable. Why not? Because <laughs> this is basketball and not... not uh, I don't know what. Yeah, exactly. I want to know what you were saying, not what. Here at the PUC, which... Are you disoriented? I'm a little off. I'm a little off. Been here for a last year. His first game since November 15th, Gerald Drumgool Jr. comes off the bench and scores. Malik Johnson zips it to the corner. Fritz passes up the contested three, gets closer and puts it in. He's too strong. Rebound for Malik Johnson. And, you know, that was one of the best stats that I've seen thus far as Malik gets into the paint and finishes. Robert Johnson, good friend of mine. Malik looking like that. Getting in the paint and finishing. He's worried you're going to talk trash about him today. <laughs> he knows it's coming. Do you have a favorite Count and Crow song? I'm going to go with the no on that one as well. Unbelievable. Got to get you listening to a little uh, little Crows later today. For the mistake. Jelani, Jelani White got the two, and it's a 6-0 run now for Canisius. That Champagne snaps to his third three of the half. See me doing what I'm doing right now. And Champagne was shooting a robust 14% from three coming into today. We'll say like that, Joe. His numbers have gone way up. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> it was interesting. I don't know if I'd characterize it as a great pass, but it was interesting. Well, he, that's a great pass, and Tony inside has a chance for three. Malik Johnson, nice behind the back dribble. Nice finish by Malik going in amongst the tree. Shot clock. Here's Brandon. But this is the one area where it can be a struggle in the zone is defensive rebound. The second field goal attempt for Xavier Johnson in this game. We're talking about a young man who we've seen put up big numbers as Reed knocks down another three. I'm an insider. There's certain insider information you don't give away. Majesty Brandon gets inside and gets two. And you see Majesty Brandon, his ability to finish. And a team that had, of course, Keldon Johnson and David McCormick, two McDonald's All-Americans. Beautiful find from Malik Johnson. And great recovery. It wasn't a perfect pass, but White caught it. And they do in the final five seconds. Good spot for Malik Johnson. Malik, teardrop. And the Golden Griffins are here to play. Terrell, Terrell Brown, excuse me, Corey, did just pick up his third foul on that first possession of the second half. Malik Johnson exploding to the basket. Wanted to ask you what you want to see from him here in the second half. Well, I'd like to see him be more aggressive in attacking the paint the same way Malik Johnson is going to one in the floor. Two young players. This could be the best backcourt in the ACC. When you think about it and you say, okay, well, you know, both of these guys have put up 30 points. 
I will agree because it did not go to the intended opponent. That was not a great pass. Maybe this gets Xavier Johnson going. Johnson had it stripped from behind by the sneaky Malik Johnson who stumbled. Then McGowan's dove for it. Brown and fires and hits a three. Oh boy. Happy New Year to you too, buddy. <laughs> Here's Champagne for three. Got it. Merged by you calling Pittsburgh's Johnson and McGowan's the best backcourt in the ACC. Okay, who would that Johnson be? Markel. Okay, so are you saying that Markel Johnson is really not, especially when a team starts to find some rhythm on the offensive end of the floor, like Canisius has done? to turn the defense into offense, turning the basketball over, and more importantly, taking advantage of those opportunities in transition. Ryan Murphy his fourth three of the day. Now, to beat the buzzer, Johnson can hit. And here comes Pittsburgh. Murphy to the basket all the way. Defensive player with the ball throw away a defensive player. It's an obvious offensive foul. You sound like a true Wake Forest Demon Deacon hating on Michael Jordan. Between Malik Johnson and Majesty Brandon, Yako Fritz. Here's Brandon in the corner for three. But the zone has slowed them down, but as we mentioned before, it is much more difficult to defensive rebound. Got someone in box out. And that time, an easy putback for Fritz on the offensive glass. And one. David Johnson gets to the cover. Now here in Pittsburgh. Extra pass. Majesty Brandon knocks down the triple. D and Majestic. Mama call him Majesty. I'm going to call him Majesty. We'll keep it like that. There's McGowan's. Nice little step back. I love Trey McGowan's when he's in attack mode. Harid tees it up. And buries the three. And Arita shot the basketball very well from beyond the arc. TV in Toronto. Against the zone, they get it to the middle. Nice pass to the corner. Textbook possession. Capped by the Brandon three. Three meetings against Pittsburgh, all of them before the 1980s. Inside, Fritz brings the Griffins within one. <laughs> in the second half, 60... 67%. Why doesn't X do that every time? Well, I don't think he can do it every time, but he can do it a lot. And of course, opposing teams set their defense to try to keep him out of the paint. He needs to make sure he hunts those opportunities because, of course, they're just a better team when he's getting into the paint for himself or for his teammates. Johnson draws another foul. The Gallons, remember, he's playing with four fouls. Rejects the screen, takes it to the rim, draws the <laughs> Malik Johnson with the Golden Griffins trailing by eight, finds Majesty Brandon for three. That's a huge shot. In the Koulibaly, making a move to the rim, spinning to the bucket, everything but the finish, and then on the second try, he missed it too, but there was Tony to help him out. I don't want to get too friendly, but I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Now they've got some interesting pieces for sure. Malik Johnson, the leader of the crew. Jelani White showing his strength. Possession arrow belongs to Pittsburgh. Xavier Johnson steps around Malik Johnson and lays it in. Champagne had 21. One of five Panthers and double figures. And two old friends share a moment at midcourt. Final score, Pittsburgh 87. Canisius 79.